So in these scientific papers that look at the data, they interpret it and they go, oh, nitric oxide is present in ulcerative colitis, in inflammatory bowel disease. So then their interpretation is nitric oxide contributes to the pathology of ulcerative colitis. Mm. It's not causal. And yeah. The example I use is, is when there's a crime, when there's a robbery or murder, cops always show up. But if you're an outsider looking in at this crime scene and you see the cops at the crime, you could interpret, if you're naive, oh, the cops caused the crime. Mm. Why is that? Well, because they're there. Yeah. Did the cops cause the crime? Nope. No, they're there. Of course they're there. Did nitric oxide cause the crime? No, it's there because anytime there's an inflammatory insult or an infection or some type of wound healing or repair mechanism, of course nitric oxide is going to be there. But it's the cops. It's not the robbers. And so that's where most of the data is hmm. misinterpreted. And then there's another camp out there that talks about a molecule called proxy nitride. Mm -hmm. And really, I think it's a very important reaction because... When nitric oxide reacts with superoxide, and superoxide is a toxic oxygen radical. It's a free radical that damages, leads to oxidative stress. How does that radical get generated? Well, it's part of normal um, kind of uh, oxidative metabolism. Okay. Right? It's, it's produced through our mitochondria, okay. and it's produced intentionally by oxidative enzymes like NADPH oxidase, which is part of our immune response, oxidative burst. And that's necessary because it kills bacteria, kills mm -hmm. infections, and it leads to, uh, you know, wound repair. Mm -hmm. But so acute inflammation, acute oxidative stress is part of our innate ability. So it's, it's just part of the normal process, part of utilizing oxygen as a substrate to generate ATP or cellular energy. Okay. So it's just a consequence, but we have to, we have to control it. So when you have uncoupled electron transport chain in the mitochondria, then you generate too much superoxide. And there's mm. some people, you know, specifically African-Americans, have an upregulation of NADPH oxidase, so they create too much superoxide. Mm. So how do we mitigate that? Well, you can downregulate, inhibit NADPH oxidase. You can recouple the electron transport chain. You can recouple the NOx enzyme and mitigate the superoxide production. But there's always going to be some present. And really, one of the antioxidant roles of nitric oxide is it scavenges the superoxide before it has a chance to cause oxidative damage. And that chemical reaction is when NO radical reacts with superoxide radical, you get a molecule that's ONOO minus. Okay. And this is where it's a very important to have a degree in biochemistry because you have to balance equations. Yeah. And we have to account for all electrons. So that ONO minus... ONOO minus was a molecule probably 30 years ago, first discovered by, um, you know, Joe Beckman, McCord, and Fridovich, who discovered these superoxide dismutase enzyme. So you look at all this reaction chemistry, and they thought, okay, it's toxic, it's damaging. But fast forward 20 years, and we recognize now that ONOO minus is the chemical structure of NO3 minus, hmm. which is inorganic nitrate. So this molecule, this intermediate, basically just rearranges into a more stable complex to, to kind of stabilize the electrons, and it forms inorganic nitrate, which is the molecule found in green leafy vegetables. Oh, really? Which <laughs> we give, right? Yeah. And then there's enzymatic pathways, thioredoxin, glutathione peroxidase, that take that cage-like molecule and immediately uh, metabolize it into inorganic nitrite, which, again, is a cardioprotective, mm -hmm. cytoprotective molecule. So the beauty of what nitric oxide does is it takes away a toxic damaging molecule, superoxide, and converts it into a cardioprotective molecule, nitride and nitrate. So there, is, there are no issues mm. with nitric oxide. In fact, it's part of its antioxidant properties. Yeah. So all these people out there saying, avoid nitric oxide, uh, stop taking nitric oxide supplements. I think you should stop taking supplements that are marketed as nitric oxide that don't generate nitric oxide that's yeah. sound advice yeah but our products we generate a certain amount of nitric oxide over a certain period of time we control and dictate the metabolic fate of nitric oxide we mitigate the oxidative stress we reduce inflammation and we prevent the immune dysfunction and that's what nitric oxide does all these other people out there who are telling you to not take nitric oxide stop taking nitric oxide supplements number one they're just naive Mm -hmm. and they don't understand the, the chemistry and the biochemistry. Or number two, they have an agenda. And so obviously everybody yeah. has an agenda. Understand their agenda. Yeah. If people that are trying to get you to take methylene blue every day, then they have to 
instruct and inform you that nitric oxide is toxic because methylene blue completely inhibits nitric oxide production and nitric oxide signaling. Yeah. Now, is that a good thing? In my eyes, probably not. Um, but, you know, I think there's some benefits of methylene blue, but I certainly wouldn't advise people to do this every day to completely inhibit nitric oxide production and nitric oxide signaling. So, you know, what our job here is, again, keeping our hand on the pulse of, of science, is to understand all these kind of reaction kinetics and mechanisms that come out. And it's not to say that I won't change my stance in a couple of years, five, ten years, if new science comes out that tells us otherwise.